Hey everyone, and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, and in today's video, we will jump into the art world by learning how to make 2D cartoony style game characters. Now, I'm using Adobe Photoshop, but really any 2D application that has a simple layer system and a hard round brush will work just fine. Give, for example, which is completely free. Characters with this sort of chunky black outline style are particularly cool for bone based animation. Big topic for another day. With that said, here are six steps to bring such assets to life. So, as usual, step one is the idea and sketch phase. So take Photoshop's hard round brush, set it to some grey colour and doodle around the canvas. With this sort of cartoony style, I usually make cute looking characters with big heads and smaller bodies. But of course you can dream up much darker looking designs. Don't bother about the lines being messy at this stage. Just stay loose and come up with interesting visual ideas that will fit your game world. One cool tip to keep in mind when going through this first initial step is having some reference photos laying around the canvas. For example, if you're making a shark-like monster, search up great white shark photos. If you want to make a mix of scorpion and giant spider creature, well then go and have fun looking for inspiring photos that will fill you up with creative juice. Having some reference will make your designs look a lot better, but can also be used to simply trigger ideas on what to draw, because even the most creative creative person will have some days where he just doesn't feel inspired, and so a quick look around the internet at what planet earth has to offer can fill you up with cool character design and of course environment ideas. Once your sketch complete, it's time to make a new layer called inking and set that same round hard brush to a much darker shade. You don't need to ink in pure jet black, but I often do with something quite close. You could however choose to outline your character in blue or even red. It all really depends on what visual style you want for your game. Now in this step, you basically need to clean up your sketch as well as add some little details to the design. The technique to get smooth black strokes is to draw your lines fast. So if you have a square for example, draw each side of that square in one single fast stroke. Same for more complex looking designs. As you can see here, I ink this circular head with one single stroke. Obviously, this is much easier said than done, and you'll often need to hit Ctrl Z to undo your poorly drawn line. You can also hit Alt Ctrl Z to undo more than one step in Photoshop. This may be a little frustrating at first, but soon enough drawing smooth black outlines for your characters will become second nature. Of course, you may not necessarily want these crisp outlines, in which case you can simply contour your sketch slowly but surely. Note however that doing so will often make your lines a little shaky, which could actually be a cool looking style. Don't hesitate of course to use your hard round eraser tool to clean up some bits and bobs. A cool trick to keep in mind when inking out your character is to not make your outline the same width everywhere. For example, give the top of your character's head a thinner black outline than the bottom. You can do so by simply chipping away at that outline with the eraser tool, giving it that nice tapered effect. Also, use a thinner brush for smaller parts of the design. So for example, my character's ridiculously small body will naturally look better with a thinner black outline. Lastly, to add an extra bit of life to your assets, scale down your brush's size and draw in a couple details that may not actually appear in your initial sketch. Now of course, this completely depends on your game's style. You could weigh down your monsters and heroes with a bunch of details, or like me, keep this chunky and simple by perhaps simply drawing a thin little line under the eyes, mouth and bellies. Awesome, it's now time to do some colouring. So I'll make a new layer called main colours, this one underneath my ink layer, because remember, stuff drawn on the above layer will render in front of stuff drawn on bottom layers. And so we don't want blobs of colour hiding our painfully drawn outlines. So scaling up my brush, I'll cover my characters in colour, not thinking just yet about shadows 
details and details. At this point, you're simply looking for color combinations that will fit nicely with your character and world. So of course, don't hesitate to try out multiple colors on the same design until you find the best looking effect. To speed up this process, you could use the bucket tool, which fills up closed spaces with a given color. But I don't really like this tool anymore. It often leaves this ugly line of pixels between your color and outline, and is it nearly as fun to use as filling up your design with color using a brush. Okay, with step 3 complete, let's move on to step 4, shadows and light. Like in my video on painting 2D game characters, at this stage, in the process, define a light source, which you can represent with a little circle, sun or bulb. Then make a new layer called shadows and light, which should be placed above your main color layer and under your inking layer. And then grabbing the eyedropper tool, which you can also access by hitting I on your keyboard, select your your main color and then select a darker version of that color in the color panel. You can then use that new shade for your shadows. So for example, if the light source is coming from above, like in this case right here, draw your shadow in the opposite direction, so below. Grabbing your eyedropper tool once again, take your main color and this time grab a lighter shade of that color, using it to highlight parts of your character directly touched by the light source. This extra little step will make your character feel a lot less flat and boring and will really give it a sense of space in your world. Next up we have step 5, color overlay. Simply make a new layer above the shadows and light one and lower the opacity to something like 30. Now grab a similar color to your main color but darker or lighter and use that to add some extra depth to your character. This is great to add a slight fades to your shadow or make things feel more 3D. This step is also great if you have extra light sources in your scene. So say you have a blazing fire to the left of your character. Simply grab a deep orange and use it to highlight the side of your design hit by that fire. If this mad scientist, for example, is in a green, spooky room, then use this layer to highlight the scientist with that unhealthy, spooky green tint. Lastly comes step 6, add final details. So make a new layer called details above the color overlay layer and have fun adding little white specular dots to make things feel wet. This is great for cute cartoony eyes. I usually scale down my brush and add little veins to some of my creatures, or slight highlights to cracks and ridges. Before wrapping up the video, here's a final trick. Say you have a background in a similar cartoony style. This fact can actually render your creatures and hero harder to spot for your player. One thing you could do is blur out your environment or give it some dark overlay. Or you could simply add a thick white outline to your enemies and player character, which actually looks really cool in my opinion and will make them instantly pop out. Maybe evil bosses and enemies could be highlighted by thick red outlines instead of white ones, which makes things even more clear to the player from a gameplay perspective. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, it would be wonderful if you could support me via Patreon, like these top supporters, whom I thank greatly. This will help me continue making regular content, as well as buying better equipment to up the video quality. Hitting the like and subscribe buttons would also be really appreciated. With that said, stay tuned for plenty more game deck content, have a great day, cheers!